G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is foul play here. We're back for the fifth and final match of this Pauper League. Losing the die roll to Ichitaro Ichi and Snow Covered Islands. Well, hopefully this isn't fairies, but he started off with a ponder, so my guess is it's not fairies. Our opponent chooses not to shuffle their library. We actually hit the Glade Cover Scout off the top, so that's a pretty nice one for us. It means we're not playing Sulhana Ledgewalker into Counterspell, which, let's be honest, is a good thing to avoid. Another ponder from our opponent, so no Counterspell still. We get to go a little bit unopposed here, so Rancor plus Cartouche, and then we just need to hit some more action after that. All right, that's that's enough mana, thank you, deck. Um, I, I appreciate you letting us curve out, but that's enough for now. Um, <laughs> we'll go ahead and Cartouche now. Alright, so no counter spell effect from our opponent. Now we're with the floating mana. Enchant a tapped forest. Brainstorm in response from our opponent. Opponent concedes? What the hell is that? That's very odd. So we could be versing like a blue control deck, but we could also be versing something like the Porpoise uh, Snowstorm. So eventually that gets to the stage where it just mills you out. As you can see, Snow Island's there. They run Brainstorm, Ponder. Um, eventually they mill you, I can't even remember the card that mills you, but they do mill you out. Um, interaction from them, I guess they can potentially have Nature's Claim, Echoing Truth, Moments Peace for Fog, um, yeah, a lot of good stuff there. A reminder as well guys, if you do enjoy the video, please consider subscribing for more content like this. Um, so we definitely want Flaring Pain and Relic of Progenitus and Standard Bearer. Um, those cards are good. Crefix's Insight is optional. If we're bringing Crefix's Insight, Commune with Spirits is a pretty easy cut. Then I might just cut out the Cartouche of Solidarity because I don't expect the creature token to be super relevant for us. This hand is gross, opponent keeping a seven, and looks like uh, we're pretty low on resources to begin with. We do have Relic and Ancest and a Standard Bearer though. Standard Bearer is not castable, so I think we have to bottom that. At least if we hit any land source, we can play Ancestral Mask. Regardless, we have Bogle plus Relic, which is pretty reasonable. There's a uh, flaring pain off the top, amusingly enough. All right, so opponent with Volatile Fjord into Ash Baron Cycle, they have a forest now and ponder all right so we do actually find the utopia sprawl here i think it's still correct to put on white um i'm gonna leave like a a mana floating here um but that's not the end of the world so we'll just skip start our attack and pass the turn next turn we can ancestral mask which is cool so it's a test and training off top. I have a feeling like our opponent's got counter spell in hand currently. So eat up their graveyard while we can. Keep that under check. All right, so that resolves. Let's like, let's double green here to make our opponent think we have ethereal armor. So they maybe they hold off on countering this, give us the draw effect. All right, so that actually resolves. We will get to attack for two damage, which is pretty good, and then we'll pass the turn. Okay, so we are actually uh, versing fairies here, the Is It Fairies deck. I, I did quickly look up, and the Volatile Fjord is indicative of fairies, so Flaring Pain, pretty bad. Relic, probably also pretty bad. We're going to attack for one, so... Ninjutsu, okay. Does this mean they hit their land drop, or are they going to miss on their land drop? Okay, opponent has missed on their land drop. And against fairies, it's usually pretty good when you resolve Armadillo Cloak. Playing to Spell Pierce right now. Spell Pierce does not connect, so we get to attack and start gaining life. Alright, this is pretty close to a winning position from here. If we either resolve Ancestral Mask or an Ethereal Armor, we'll be in a very, very strong spot. Brainstorm from our opponent. So this is my second time versing Is It Fairies. Um, it definitely to me seems a lot easier than um, Mono Blue Fairies or Demir Fairies because they just have less interaction for us, in my opinion. So again, opponent uh, scries to the bottom with Fairy Seer. Um, but again, they are holding up uh, Mr. Trigger. Whoops, holding up Spell Pierce. Viral Armor lets us play around Spell Pierce though, so that's kind of nice. 
Let's Ethereal Armor now. That should be victory from there. Clay Cover Scout. Attack for eight. I mean, we've got our life gain, we've got our trample, and we've got our first strike on a big body. I don't see where it goes wrong from here. And opponent is hacking in. Uh, I'm not going to block with the scout. It just doesn't seem worth it to me. They get a card draw of the ninja, but again, I'm not that fussed about the card draw at this point. I think we're just attacking for the win. I don't want them to like randomly filter into black mana or something and then chain his edict to me at one creature, just in case they're doing something very, very funky with the deck. Um, as it is, that two damage and one card drawn is not really threatening us very much. So two to the bottom with Fairy Seer again, and then Augur of Bolas. Finding Electricery, okay. Well, opponent has to discard now. Goes to us, and... Let's Ancestral Mask as if it wasn't already an absolute certainty that we won. All right, so opponent concedes the match. Um, so just for super information's sake here, this is more what the Is It Fairies deck is about. They're actually like running less fairy creatures because they've got Aura of Bolas in there. So it's like Spell Starter Sprite, Fairy Seer, and the Spell Starter Sites have like a bit of a harder time because of that. They have the Commandeer so they can get the Monarch effect going on then they run removal of like lightning bolt scred um so those are like some slots which line up and do nothing against us same with fire the eyes can tap a land or something but it's not the end of the world um sideboard of like electricery um possibly and the festivities fiery cannonade more counter spells like more spell pierces and whatnot so against fairies, uh, you should be bringing in your, against is it fairies, you should be bringing in your Crimson Acolytes because it gets around those sweeper effects that our opponents have. Probably taking out Silhana Ledgewalker as the efficiency swap. It's possible that you could leave like one Ledgewalker in, um, take out an Ancestral Mask or something instead, um, and just have like three creatures in that two mana slot. That's probably fine. Uh, this just attacks really poorly into flying creatures that get the block and it doesn't have that tempo. Um, I guess this, like, attacks pretty poorly into flies as well and on the ground, but it is dodging that uh, the board sweeper effects our opponent has. The only other option is you could potentially bring in Gutshot for something like Ancestral Mask, um, because Gutshot can kill their spell status sprite in response and fizzle a trigger. It can be a little bit cute, and I have tested it against the regular mono blue fairy deck. Um, it hasn't been very good, but against this deck where it runs like literally eight fairies, realistically it could actually be an option here. So um, just something to keep in mind. I'm not saying it's definitely right or definitely wrong, but again, something to keep in mind. All right, so League wasn't like super amazing, wasn't super awful. Um, we had that loss against Ponza, which is a tough matchup regardless. I felt like we were pretty close to getting there. Um, just one land source short after like drawing seven or eight cards. It was crazy. Um, although realistically, we probably needed to draw like three turns earlier. Um, or our opponent having one less destroy land effect after playing four. Um, so if they only had three, we could have got there. Um, so obviously we went rank wall as this league and had some test and training in there instead. Like I didn't really notice the loss of tempo from playing rank or the loss of power from playing it. I think the card draw is kind of nice. Um, I think it lines up well into the metagame where there are main deck Dawnbringer clerics as well um, and lines up well into their sideboard too. Um, other than that, I mean, I didn't really m miss Lotus Petal this league. Maybe it would have been helpful in some of the matchups. Maybe it would have been pretty good into Ponza because against Ponza, uh, Lotus Petal is a bit nicer than Commune because we're guaranteed that white mana so we can resolve an Ethereal Armor, a Sentinel's Eyes, or like turn two ramp into an Armadillo Cloak on the play. Um, so that that's something to consider if Ponza's on your mind maybe lotus petals where you should be um that's it for the league though guys i hope you enjoyed it as always let me know what you thought in think in the comment section below Till next time have a wonderful day and i'll see you then